Hi everyone, welcome back. So let's make Clarice. I'm starting with one piece of 18 gauge round soft copper wire. It's cut to 16 inches long. I have two additional pieces of 18 gauge round soft copper wire cut to 12 inches long. And my cabochon is 10 millimeter round it's a fun little piece of mood changing glass, temperature changing glass, and it's about four millimeter thick. And again, it's, I think it's 10 millimeter round, might be 12, but I think it's 10. And they're fun, they're inexpensive, and they change color based on your temperature. And that works also still in the wire, so it's a pretty fun one to use. I'm going to take my longest length, my 16 inch, and I'm just going to mark the middle of the wire. It's about right here at 8 inches. It doesn't need to be exact. I'll take a round nose plier. I'm going to set this cabochon in a setting I call midway station, which is a cabochon capture for the center of your wire. So I'll take my round nose plier and I'll just hold on to the center of the wire. Put my thumb below it, my forefinger above it, and I'm going to turn the plier from a vertical position to a horizontal position. And that should make the letter S for me. Just like that. So it's kind of like you've made a little letter S. And you want this to be about the size this space to be about the diameter or the size of the diameter of your stone so that it can sit there nicely at the bottom. Okay. Once I get my figure S made, I'll continue the wires around to make like a circle around my S. Go one wire, and then I'll go with the second wire. So I've made like a little S or a spiral. I've made a little circle around my S. And I'm keeping the arms opposite each other as I work. Once I get my little seat made, I'm just going to raise these two arms slightly. So there's a slight upslope in them. Makes like a little cup. I'll fit my cabochon to the bottom here. I'll hold it in place. And then it's, you have to give a lot of pressure there to hold it in place for the first few turns. Try to keep it center. And I'm just going to work my, my coils in and up the side of the cabochon. And I'm going to keep my two wires opposite each other. So I'll do like a half a turn with the one, getting right at the edge of the cab. And then I'll flip over and start to move the other one around the cab. And you'll notice I'm just starting to, as I coil, I'm moving up towards the dome of the cab. And I'll just move each wire, you know, about a quarter length or so, focusing on keeping them opposite of each other as I move around and capture the cabochon. See the next coil is slightly above and inside the previous one. Come back to this one and bring it to be opposite the other one. And you want to do this until you get above the soft shoulders of the cab so that it stays inside the coil bezel. About like that. You'll know when you have it because the stone will feel real secure, shouldn't fall out. And again, you'll end with the wires opposite of each other as evenly as you can. So about like that. If you need to, you can come to the bottom of it and gently scooch that initial shape to the center if you need to. Okay, and you'll see how my wires are just above the soft shoulders of my cab. If you need to squeeze right here to get it 
the two wires a little closer on top you can and my wires are opposite of each other. Once I get this set up, I'll take a flat nose plier or you could take your chain nose plier, grip the wire just a millimeter or two so off the side of the cup like this, hold that upper coil down and make a 90 degree turn towards the towards the bottom and the back so like you're pushing the wire underneath the cab or just to the side. Turn it over, hold that upper coil, do the same thing, grip the wire just a millimeter or so off the cup and give it a 90 degree turn down. So you made like a little pin with these wires. And then we'll bring these wires back down to horizontal right on top of the back of the cup. There's an L shape and an L shape to each side of the wires. As we drop the wires down, you'll want to be to the inside of those L shapes, okay? So I'll hold the side of my cup, focus on one wire at a time, and I'll just bring it down straight across the back and to the inside of the L. Turn over and do the opposite side. Just hold on to everything and drop it to the bottom. And now you have your capuchon captured in the middle of this wire. And you have your two wires extended to the side. The extended wires are here, so you can bring them into design or do whatever you need to with this little cap. In our case, we're going to turn it over here and we're going to get the other two wires that we have, and they should be close in size. They might be off a few millimeters and that's okay. We'll bring one to one side and we'll align the other with the other side just like that. So the two wires that come from the cup are on the inside and the two fresh wires are the two on the outside. Okay, you'll make sure that the ends are fairly lined up. They don't have to be perfect. But if you want them to be, you you know, get them aligned on one side and then come to the other side and just cut them even. So now I have three even lengths of wire. The center one holds my cabochon. All right? So I could weave these wires now or I can wrap them, whatever you want to do. For this tutorial, and to make it quick, I'm just going to use 22 gauge half round and wrap them. So before I do, I'll make sure that my ends are even. I'll put my three wires down on a measure here. And I'll center the cup on a cross wire. From the edge of the cabochon, I'll measure out one inch. So I'll come to here. And I'll mark all three wires, one inch. And from this side, the side of the cup, I'll come out one inch and mark all three wires. Just like that. I don't normally tape them, but if you feel like you need to tape them, you can tape half of the side and work one side at a time. I'll get 22 gauge half round, and I'm going to take a foot and a half, so 16 inches, to wrap my one side, and then I'll do 16 inches for the other side. So half round has a domed side and a flat side, and I'll just use my finger and straighten out the wire. I'm going to pick all three of these wires up, making sure that my two extra wires are to the outsides and that my the wire that holds the cabochon is to the inside. I have the flat side of the half round facing up and I'm just going to slip underneath all four wires, not the coil of the cup, just all four wires, okay? So right about there. 
I'll stay to the right hand side since I'll do that side first and I'll just turn down a little one inch there so I can hold on to it and I'll take the rest of my length and I'll wrap all four wires three times. Sometimes it's easier to go through the little side right there. Just hold on to that little fragment. So there's one nice wrap. You want to anchor the wire so that you have all three of these wires wrapped underneath the cup here, or all four of them I should say, because two come from the cab and then there's one on each side. So in this center bit there's four frame wires there and you just want to make two or three wraps on this side around each of those frame wires. Let me get my focus up a little bit so you can see. Okay. So I've made these wraps around all four of those wires and I'm just going to do that a couple of times. Make it tight, but don't make it so tight that you pull these wires out from each other. They want to sit side by side. You don't want them to bunch up. And there is going to be a little gap to the one side where, you know, that additional wire is in there and that's okay. We'll just bend that a little bit and we'll get these three wires lined up together. Okay, so I'm holding my half round and again you could be weaving this if you choose to. With the flat side up so that it's against the frame wires here. I'm going to try to get one more wrap in there. And now I'll start going out into the banded wire here. And it's okay, they might shift a little bit as you're working them and that's all right. You know, you're looking for approximately one inch from the cup. So just holding everything here, I'll just go overhanded and underhand and I'll make side-by-side -side wraps for one inch, keeping the flat side of my half round against my round frame wires. After a few wraps, you just get your chain nose or a flat plier and tap them down a little bit. Okay. I'll start wrapping from the front here so you can see a little better. And we'll just keep these three side by side. So tight enough that you got them, but not so tight that you crush them over each other. They want to stay side by side. Make a few wraps. Get the plier, make a few taps. I like to tap them down about every five or seven wraps. Keep the bubble out of them. Keep them nice and side by side and the tension as consistent as you can. You can just hold on to the half round and spin the entire band of wires if that's easier for you as well. Or you can go overhand and underhand, which is what I tend to do. And 
And now as it gets longer, hold it up here where you're closer to your working space so your coils can be a little more consistent. And I'm going to stop right about there and I'll take a measure. Oh, got a little bubble right there and that's okay. We're going to put design over this so it doesn't have to be flawlessly perfect. And I'll measure from the edge of my cup and I have one inch, well I have two or three more wraps to go. So I'll just make a couple more of these. And once you get all of your one inch, your 16 inches of half round might only have about an inch left and that's where we want to be. Okay, I didn't count those but you could have counted those wraps as well. So from the center of the, you know, put my cup in the center of a line and from the edge of the cup over to one and a, uh, one total inch. Okay, so that's from here to here is one inch. Okay, and I'll do a second piece of half round. I'm going to get rid of this fragment by cutting it and leaving a couple of millimeter there at the end so that I can take it, turn that tip underneath, turn it down, and then get above that little bit and just pinch it underneath the cup there. So that's pretty clean. All right, and now we'll get another 16 inches of 22 gauge half round, and I'll start here and do the same thing. I'll wrap for an inch to this side. Okay, so I have a fresh piece of 22 gauge half round. Straighten it out with my fingers. I have the flat side facing up, and I'll insert right into that space between the, the bottom of the cabochon and those four wires. I don't want any of the cabochon coil in there, so you just insert Get an inch of leading wire and make a few wraps to anchor this wire. Make sure you're not coming out of the coil. You're only getting those four wires. And again, you could be doing this with 28 gauge or 26 gauge. You could be weaving these wires if you want to instead of wrapping them with half round. That takes a little bit longer, but we do it the exact same way as you're doing it here. Okay, so I'll make three of them. I'll anchor my little wire right there. Pull it nice and tight. And then I'll just start wrapping there at the base of the cup. So I've got, I'm anchored to all four wires here and then I'm just going to jump and wrap these three just like I did on this side. You can give them a little pinch with your plier if you need to to help them stay side by side. Start wrapping all three wires. Keep the half round flat side against the frame wires as you work. If you have a little fragment left over, come to the back side of the frame, cut it off so that you leave the little fragment living on the frame there. I'll cut this leading side off too. I'll just cut it down here, tuck it into that space. underneath the cup there. Okay, so it's about 30 wraps each side, maybe 32 or 33, and if you set your cabochon cup down on the measure and center the cup, 
there should be one inch from the side of the cup to your wrap and one inch from the side of your cup to your wrap or approximately and I've got about 30 to 33 wraps on each side of this it doesn't need to be exactly perfect one side's this side's a little bit longer than this side so I might actually just get rid of a couple of wraps on this side I did those few extra and that's good so you can always undo a few wraps if you find that you're uneven or you can count an exact amount on either side all right so we're about here and now with the three wires they're round so they're going to want to jiggle and that's okay you just keep them under control we'll start with this right hand side one pull it out slightly put your thumb right there and get a nice curve on it bring it over itself use your thumb to help you push down on it. Make a little loop just off to the side of your cabochon here, just like that. If you need to use a flat plier and reduce the size of your loop, you can gently do that. Hold, hold the extended wire and just do a gentle squeezing until you get the loop size that you want. Okay, so for the next one, the center one, we're going to handle it a little bit different. We'll part these two wires a little bit. And get your plier, a small, you know, flat plier like this one, and just grip just beyond that tip. Hold tight, bring the wire straight up. straight over the top of the cab like that. Take it here and hold it. Swing it out to the left. You're holding just a little couple of millimeter there. Swing it out to the left just beyond your first little wrap. Go ahead and give a gentle squeeze and close that loop a little bit. So you have one that is vertical, all right, this little loop. Turn this way, and now just try to bring this wire elegantly around. Try to line it up with that other wire. You can flare it a little bit if you want to. Just get a little curve on it like that. Work it until you get it aligned with that other one. Everything's nice and flat. Okay, you could be doing this down here on your board too. I'm trying to stay up here for the camera. And so for this final one, we're gonna swing it out and bring it right next to those two. So come up here and just hold it. You flare that out as much or as little as you want. And I'm just making a curve that I like and bringing the wire around to meet these other three. And you want to be slanted so that you're just, you know, kind of up and along the side of that bezel cup. And if you want to skinny this one up a little bit, you can, just like that. Now, if you want to weave or you want to do anything with these wires, you could do this now. You could do this after the bends as well. I kind of like to do them after the bend so that I can, you know, just have a visual and to have some choices some options so I'm going to start with this inside one I've got my finger underneath the cup my thumb underneath you know over all of this and I'm just going to turn this wire under I'm going to use the pad of my finger to make a nice curve and just turn it kind of down and diagonal like that so you get this nice little swing over to the side and you can follow that up with the other two, either one at a time, or you can do them together, whichever you prefer. Put, use the pad of your finger down here. Sometimes doing them one at a time is a little easier to give yourself some nice, elegant curves. 
keep the curves side by side and the wires in order and just flare that out as much or as little as you want and then bring them back together once you get the curve the curves that you want just going to bring them back together and leave them like that so coming down from the cup at a slant like that until we do the other side you can make that as big or as little as you want i try to stay kind of under and you know center to the cup a little bit and we can make adjustments later as well but just get those three wires lined up your focus is on whether or not you love all that elegance okay making sure everything's nice and flat turn to the opposite side and i'll just repeat this but this time we have these wires and so we're going to travel over them and hook into them so i'll take this first one just like we did create a little out turn put my finger in there swing it around over itself use your thumb it wants to jiggle because it's round just keep it under control and get it to where it's laying nice and flat i'm going to skinny that up hold the extended wire and skinny it up a little bit these opposite wires are going to be under and when we fold we're going to fold over them when we curve but we're not curving just yet so we'll take the center one do the same thing get your plier on it just below that previous curve turn straight up grip it at the first millimeter here nice and tight hold on to it and swing it out just past that curve narrow it up a little bit and then you can either hold it here and swing it back or you can hold it with your hands just make a nice curve back in the opposite direction I'm going to curve this other one a little bit more so just like that get them lined up nice and side by side and then let's bring this third one over just make a nice tight bend right there bring it over itself and over those wrapped bands and right down next to the other ones just like that this side turned out a little prettier than the other one okay they're still both very pretty and then now one wire at a time but we'll go over these three and hook around so i'll take my first one just get it slanting the way you want it nicely put your finger underneath the cup this wire is above the other three and just like the other one I'm going to make a nice turn but I'm hooked in you see because I went over these wires and I'll just slant this wire in the opposite direction as these and I'll follow that up with the other two so I'll take my next one hold it right there to help it curve come above these wires so that you hook in and come right next to the other one and just down like that just get that beautiful curve the way you want it now we'll go for the third one come over those three wires hook into them focus on the elegance there and then when you get that the way you want it just turn that wire down bring all three of them side by side you might have to jiggle one or the other to get them back to side by side over here with the open curves over here now you have this and it's beautiful make sure everything's nice and flat you want to make sure that these turns are the way that you want them to be and then with these three wires we're going to take this inside one and we're going to lock it down so we'll just continue to curve i've got my finger underneath all of them 
and I'll let you have a look at that back side again so it's nice they're locked in together okay so I'll take my finger and hold it underneath so that I don't lose those curves I'll take this inside wire bring it up bring it over bring it to this side and there's a little space that we can tuck into right there. I don't need three wires over here, so I'm just bringing that one over and I'm just gonna end it. It's a tight maneuver. Cut it off so that that's, you know, maybe three quarter of an inch, enough to make it around that little cup. And then you can take some bent nose or fine pliers, take the very end of this, hold everything back here so nothing moves, you're looking to make a bend in this wire and just motion it underneath the cup. There's into that little space that's open. Okay, just like that. It doesn't have to be tight. It just has to be nice and tucked away. Just like that. We'll do the same with the opposite side. Take that first inside wire, hold everything. Make sure it doesn't change this curve that you love if you're pulling on it. Okay, bring it around this cup nice and tight. And again, there's that little space and we'll just tuck it up into that. So I'll cut this. right about the top edge of the cup. Take a fine plier, get on the nose of this. Just turn it down, curve it so that you can tuck it into that little space right there underneath the cup. And if you need to pinch it off, you know, this way too, you can. It's a big stretch for the plier. But just get a nice little squeeze on it. Same for this side. If you need to do a big stretch on the plier, get on both sides of the wire and do a very gentle and careful squeezing to just bring those two wires in a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Just make them flat and almost invisible. Okay, everything is still nice and flat this way too. You put it down and tap everything if you need to and we'll make some more elegance out of these out of these lengths here in just a minute all right so now the next two wires I've got my finger down here to protect my curves I'm holding the top of the gemstone I'm going to go this next wire and I'm going to bow it a little bit bring it up right beside this next one just like that same thing, bring this up, bow it up a little bit, and bring it just right next to that other one. Okay, if you want to make curly cues like I'm about to do, you can with me. If you want just nice clean curves and nothing, cut them here and here, flip them over the wrapped bar, and pinch them back. And then you can end them that way. And you can always go back to that if this goes bad too. So I've got my curves looking the way I want it. I'll cut it up here. Um, it's probably three quarter of an inch. I'm just leaving a little bit. Get my round nose plier. Get on the very end of this. I'm gonna draw back slightly so I have some room. Then I'm gonna turn my plier and make a nice cute little spiral right there. Curve. Just like that change my camera focus a little bit so you can see it real nice and easy just like that and then this other one we'll cut it and we'll curl into the back direction in the opposite direction so I'm going to cut it up here this whole thing might be one and a quarter inches right, from here to here 
better to be a little longer and give yourself enough rather than be short. So I'll hold on to my nice curve right there so I got some leverage and turn in the opposite direction as the first spiral. Make a nice tight little backward curl there. You can stretch this down a little bit. Pull this one out and I can tighten this one up, make it a little more curly after that. And that looks really nice. Okay, so we'll do the same to the other side now. Hold on to everything here in the back. Hold on to the top of the gemstone, give pressure. Take this inside wire, curve it up nicely, let it bow out a little bit. Take the next wire, follow it along. Get your curves nice and eyeballed there. And we'll cut this one. Take my round nose plier, get on top of it, pull it out slightly. Try to hold that little curve if you can, it'll give you some leverage and if not, just try to turn it the best that you can without that. And I'm just going to try to turn this wire nice and tight into that space. You can re-grip. and complete your little turn right there. That's cute. You can snip out a little munchy tip if you have one. And now with this side, I'll do the same. Snip it just above those curves. Take my round nose plier, I'll hold this bottom edge, bottom curve, and I'll turn in the opposite direction. Check both sides and see that they're similar. If not, you can make some tweaky adjustments. And they don't have to be perfect. They can be slightly different from each other. Just snip out that very munchy tip, just the very tip of it. And I'm just going to shape these wires to my liking. I snip out the munchy tip of this one and I'm going to make this a little tighter, bring it in a little closer, get down here, hold my curves, Ooh. turn that in a little bit tighter and I munch the tip again so <sighs> I'll just cut that little munchy out. I use my flat plier now and just see if I can get a little close on it, a little tighter. There you go. And that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So everything's nice and flat. I've got similar curls on both sides. I've got my cabochon in the middle. You might have to fiddle the lay a little bit. It's okay. Just make sure everything's nice and flat. And then if you want to adjust any curves or anything, now would be the time to do it. I could get this one for example and Try to make it a little curvier if I need to. I can open those two up a little bit if I need to. Get a flat nose, I mean a nylon jaw, and carefully give pressure hardening. Love taps to all of these little elements. I'm holding everything, tapping those three wires and giving a little hardness to them and making sure that they lay on my frame in a nice flat way. Just like that. You can make any adjustments to curves and such if you want to. And then now we'll just use 28 or 26 gauge and we'll start tying things up, you know, or weaving things out, whatever you want to do. These are still open elements. All they are are hooked together here in the back.
but until we tie them up, you know, they'll still shift around. So let's get two feet of 28 gauge wire and we'll do some whimsy on this thing. All right, so I have two feet of 28 gauge wire. To make it easy, I think I'm just gonna coil these two and then along those two. So I'll take the first one inch here and I'll just anchor it off. I suppose these wires with a nylon jaw, so you might be close, you know, to the to the wrapped bands here. So if you need to make a little space so you can get in there, just stick your thumb in there. All right. So I'm just going to anchor. I'm going to leave this stuff bare and I'll just get to almost the top of the wraps there and I'll just go overhanded. And wrap coils solidly along these two frame wires. And they shift still, right? See the whole thing? So you can always pull it back a little bit or you can push it in a little bit more. And actually, I kind of like it pushed in a little bit. So I might just end it right there. And with this remaining few inches of wire, I'm going to dive through, but this time I'm going to grab the two loops in the back. Oh, I missed it. So I'm going to just try to dive through and get through some of those coils back there. So it looks nice up here, but I can tie it back here and then I have the opportunity to make these, you know, to stitch these together a little bit. So I'll just take a few wraps with this wire around all three of those right there several times. You can wrap as many or as little as you want, but you know, three or four to really make it nice and secure. And then you can end this length of wire right here underneath your wraps. Just give a little tension. I'm going to make big circles. I made four coils and then I can get rid of that. And that looks pretty darn good. I love that. I'll get rid of this leading one. Same thing. I'll just take it and give a little tension and do some circles until it breaks deep and on the inside. And I love how that looks. I'll get another 24 inches of 28 gauge wire and I'll repeat that on this side. So I anchored a fresh piece of 20, 24 inches long on the opposite side and now I'll just make solid coils till I get to the center the same as I did on that side. All right, very nice. So now we have these two and these two we can deal with. It should feel pretty good, but you know, certainly these can still pull out. So we want to do a little bit more to them. And I like to just re-tap everything. Once I get my wires all coiled, you don't have to kill anything. You're just re-tapping everything. Make sure it all lays down nice. 
looks beautiful. So I'll get another foot and a half, so 16 inches of 28 gauge wire. All right, I've got 16 inches of fresh. I anchored it down here, and I'm just, for the sake of time, you can weave these however you want to, but I'm just gonna do the same overhanded coils that I did along here to keep the look kind of sleek and clean. I think that's good right there. I'll just tap these down, make sure that my spirals are laying nice. With this last little bit, I like to end on a single wire and not on a double. So I'm just gonna make a few single coils. The wire's short now, so I'll just use my plier and I'll travel along this little single wire for a few wraps. You can do that however you please. That's pretty good. I'll just cut this off down here. Give it a little bit of a tap to lay that down. And then I'll just love pat all of this. You want to give it a slight raise right here. It's not much of one. It's just enough to give downward tension to your spiral heads. So you'll hold those down and as you're tapping, you just wanna give slight upward pressure so that they lay down nicely, just like that. And then we'll put a few stitches right here and sew that together. Alternately, or in addition, you could put a few stitches right there to help hold that bar in place. And now I'll just repeat on this side. You could do something different. You could do something the same for the sake of time and sleek looking design. I'm just gonna do the same and coil these two down. So I'll get a fresh piece of 16 inches of 28 gauge wire. That's pretty good. Tap everything down. Make sure that you've got a bit of an up. Turn on those. Your spirals will lay down nicely. And now you can just position them so that the head of that spiral can be tied down to that wire if need be and I feel like it should be. So go ahead and break the end of this one off. I'll break the leading fragment off. It's looking quite pretty so far. And then I'll just take a few stitches right here to tie those into place. I'll just use some of my 28 gauge, just a bit of scrap that I had. Carefully come through here and it's tight because you're up against your coils underneath there. So you just whittle along until you can get right there and try to get a couple of nice wraps that look neat and look deliberate. So there goes one, and I'll just do one more through, through the bar underneath there, you know, through the uh, wire right next to it. Try to get those two wraps nice and clean, and then you can come underneath it again 
I'm using about four inches here of 28 gauge. And you can do a few wraps right here if you want to, to make it look like it was deliberate. So I'll go four. I'll do five. Maybe I'll do a few since I've got a few inches here. So you can use four inches to tie these off and then give yourself a few wraps. Just give a leading inch, hold on to it, wrap that guy a couple times, and then do a few single wraps on here to make it look all nice and consistent. So I don't know how many that was, eight maybe. I'll do enough to get to the end of this coil right here since I have a few inches. Well, not anymore, I only got about an inch left, but. And you can do this again to your liking. That's good enough there. I think I like the way that looks a lot. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this little fragment here. I'll get rid of the leading fragment. Just hang on to it. Make sure to hold on to your spiral. Give a little tension and nice circles until it breaks. Okay, boom. And that's a very clean tie. Okay, and I'll just repeat on this side here. I'll get about four inches of 28 gauge, four or five, whatever you're comfortable with. I'll go ahead and pass into here, get a leading inch there and hold on to it. Get underneath that there wire. Do a couple of wraps. Nice and tight into that little hook. And then on your second one, come up against that bare wire and do several little wraps to make it look like the other side. That's good there, I think. And that's 15 or 6 of 10 of them on either side. Just make them look nice in the way you like them. Do a couple more there, and then I'll get rid of this wire. Push the coil tight. Hold everything and give a little tension until it breaks. Make sure those two ties there are nice and clean. Hold everything down and do big circles with a little tension until the whole thing breaks off. Woo, beautiful. So now this whole thing's real secure. Feels really nice. And what can you do with Clarice? Well, we could put chain and jump rings to either side here 
and make it into a beautiful necklace bar. I'm gonna get my favorite four millimeter jump rings. They're 22 gauge in wire. Open it up slightly. Put your chain through it. And then of course you can come through that little space at the end. Close up your jump ring. Use two pliers if you need to. Mine's just kind of little, so I'm cheating. Just pinching it together. And there goes one side. Get another little jump ring. Get it on the end of my chain, on the end of my piece. Close up my jump ring. To get them tight, take two pliers and kind of jiggle back and forth until they close. Okay, and there's that. And now from those ends, we can go off into one more jump ring and a lobster claw closure. So I'll get a small jump ring, another four millimeter, open it up, put it to my lobster claw. I'm gonna put this on this side of the chain. And I don't need a ring for the opposite side because, you know, my chain is a, has a big enough loop here where I can just hook in like that. And then this is now a beautiful choker necklace that you can wear. You can put a slight bend on these wires just so that they sit kind of turned to the inside so it's comfortable around the neck. Just a very slight bend on it, not much. So when I put it down, it's kind of got a, a raised side here. And that way, when it sits on the neck, it'll be slightly curved. You can wear it just to the bottom of uh, the neck, like a choker style, and that's just lovely. And here's another example I did using all 20 gauge wires and a small eight millimeter moonstone. Here's another example I did with leaving that third wire out, bringing it underneath, and flipping it back over for a little curl. See it right there? As opposed to just bringing it around the cup and cutting it off, right? That could have gone underneath and become more design and one more length of wire there. So those are some options. All right, so if you wanna make this into a cuff, then you get a nice big dowel. I use PVC. You can get this anywhere from the hardware store. Just brace your work on it and gently push back to curve this entire situation. Put a slight curve on it just like that. Make sure to really push down these ends So now you have a nice, beautiful cuff bracelet that you can wear. And you can adjust this chain and make it, you know, length enough to get a nice snug fit right there so that uh, it can be easily worn but won't go anywhere. So that's the other thing you can do with Clary's. That's beautiful. It's an easy way to make a bend, just using a large PVC pipe or a medicine bottle, vitamin bottle, all of those work, and it makes a beautiful cuff. Okay. All right, you guys, thanks again for your time. I hope your imaginations are going crazy for Clarice. Much love, we'll see you again. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks again for being here. We'll see you for the next one. Much love.